So today we're gonna to go over all the issues in detail with the Two Trees Bluer printer and the company itself that we encountered with this machine. And this is gonna be safe for work. So stay tuned. If you buy a Two Trees Bluer, you can get a nice assortment of stepper motors and screws and nuts and bolts. This is what you get with the Bluer. I'm gonna go over a couple different segments in this video. The first covering the physical issues with the printer. The second being ethical issues with the company and a closing segment that will go over what I feel they need to do to make this right and to fix this for existing and future customers. The first main issue that I have a major complaint with on a printer of this size and price is the fact that there are no eccentrics. This is unacceptable in 2019, especially on a printer that's trying to compete with a printer like the Ender 3 that comes with basic design components like eccentric nuts. While you can design a printer without eccentric nuts, the problem is eventually those wheels are going to wear down and you're going to have no way to adjust the tension of the wheels against the extrusion. If you don't have a way to adjust this, then you're going to have to replace the wheels instead of just taking out a wrench and making a small adjustment so you can keep going about printing. Next issue is the YN stop switch. Due to how they designed it, the switch they selected, and how everything is physically assembled by two trees, this is not a part that you assemble, it gets bound up on the extrusion, meaning the printer thinks Y is homed when it's really not, and the switch stays closed. You could try swapping the switch to a switch with a shorter arm, but then the bed may not hit the end stop switch. This is a very big design oversight and something very basic that they obviously rushed and just decided to slap the switch on the frame by tapping two holes and screwing it down without realizing that this is going to get caught up, or maybe they did and they just didn't care and they wanted to ship the printer. The X and Y drivers on mine both lost steps. If you felt the carriage when it was moving or when the motors were in a locked position, there was basically no torque. They're using some knockoff white label TMC2208 drivers. They look to be the ones that Feistech makes just without the Feistech branding. And out of the box, the torque is abysmal. I figured, okay, maybe they didn't set the VREF. So I cranked the VREF up, the torque was still abysmal. The TMC2208 step six they're using are they're terrible. They're terrible step sticks. They don't have enough torque. They're probably not properly designed or maybe they're knockoff TMC chips. China's really good at copying that kind of stuff and the 228s have been out for a while. Since we're talking about stepper drivers, let's talk about heat sinks because there were no heat sinks installed on the step sticks. The step sticks are removable stepper drivers, which is a nice addition. Just like other stepper drivers, you need to have heat sinks on them. Now they do include heat sinks in the box, but there's no mention anywhere in any of the installation materials that say to put these heat sinks of this size on these particular drivers because you have two different drivers which have two different size heat sinks. And if you guys don't know, if you run stepper drivers without heat sinks that need them, they overheat and they die. Next issue, the vertical extrusion that the X gantry actually attaches to that serves as the entire Z travel. Normally, let's say, let's say my hands are these two pieces of extrusion. The two pieces should be equal distance forward and backwards on the printer frame. However, let's imagine we're looking top down here. On mine, the left side was five millimeters forward to the right side. And I had no way of adjusting this to go forward or back or the other side. 
go forward or back. Meaning, when I put the X gantry bar across these two brackets, I had to bend the bar five millimeters to get it to touch both sides, meaning the frame's not actually square then. You can tell they intended to be able to adjust the distances of those upright bars. However, because they didn't include the right type of screws, the heads on the ones they included are so big that they just cover the whole elongated hole and you have no range of adjustment. It may seem like a small detail, but when you need to adjust things and you can't, it becomes a big problem. Now for the filament sensor. If you got this printer out of the box, the filament sensor doesn't work. I took the sensor off of the printer and connected to another printer that has working filament sensor setups on it, and the sensor itself does physically work. The problem is they didn't properly set up the firmware to handle the filament sensor, registering that it actually ran out. The power resume feature sort of worked. What happened was when we tested the power resume feature that they advertised, it did go and try to restart the print. However, it wasn't extruding any filament. It was performing the retracts and the extrudes after the retracts, but in terms of actually feeding it during a head move, there was no filament coming out. The motor wasn't even trying to move. This would be a firmware issue that needs to be fixed. Because it was still retracting and then trying to feed back in after the retract, it ended up completely jamming up the hot end to the point where I would have to disassemble it and either reseat the PTFE tubing or do a cold pull. So a software issue physically screwed up the hot end on the printer because they didn't properly set things up. The heated bed on our unit was completely busted. The traces were cracked, meaning there was no continuity at all and it couldn't heat up. This is an indicator of a larger issue with how they're actually building these machines. And that issue is that they're not checking anything. There's no way in hell they checked anything on this machine in terms of basic stuff working. The heated bed being completely defective out of the box, along with there being no filament ever melted in the nozzle, tells me that they're doing no quality assurance on these. They're slapping them together and sending them out the door and assuming everything works. The only quality check to make sure everything works that happens is when you guys put it together. And then if something's broken, you're gonna be waiting at least a month to get replacement parts if they'll even send them to you. And how do I know they're probably not gonna send you guys replacement parts if there is a problem? Well. I gave them a list of these issues and they were more concerned with getting the video removed so people didn't know about all these problems when they could have just said, we're sorry, you got a defective unit. Can we send you out some replacement parts? That's what they should have done. And never at all during any conversations I had with them, did they offer to send out any replacement parts to fix the unit they sent me. If I had purchased this machine with my own money, I'd be going through my credit card company to get all my money back. So in addition to all those physical issues with the printer, the power supply as well had issues with grounding. And I do want to mention that other companies that use these really poor quality fire traps of a power supply have these issues from time to time as well. However, that does not excuse the fact that the power supply received had eight ohms of resistance between the ground terminal and the chassis. It's dangerous, and especially on a machine where you have a customer digging around in the internals with mains voltage, it could result in death if it can't find a path to ground. Two trees and other companies need to stop using these low quality power supplies, or if they do, the companies that are making these cheap power supplies need to step up their quality checks and make sure that something as basic as grounding being correct and functioning is no longer an issue. So that's all the issues with the printer itself. This isn't even covering the issues with the company ethically or with the firmware. Problem I have with the company is they showed no concern for actually trying to correct the issues when I reached out to them and they reached out to me. There were no emails or messages saying, let us send you some new parts or we're aware of these issues or we're gonna fix them. Can you pull the video down? We'll send you new parts and then you can update the video. No, nope, there was just, take the video down, it's bad. You're making us look bad, the video's bad, you're saying bad things about our product the video needs to be removed. So in order to show them that I want to actually do a good review on them and give their printer a fair shot, I said, fine, I'll take the video down. I need these issues fixed. I'll even pay you guys to send me another printer once the problems are fixed. And then I'll put up another video about the new machine and let everybody know that you guys are working on the problem. Instead, what happened was, as soon as the videos were taken down, the representatives just stopped responding to any further inquiries that I had sent them, any messages, any follow-ups. As far as they were concerned, the video is down, their problem was solved. And that's not my opinion, that's a fact, because after that, I got 
emails forwarded to me from potential customers of theirs where they were talking to the sales rep, brought up the concerns that I had and the issues I had with my machine. The sales rep reply was that the issues aren't actually a problem and they got me to take the video down, which means that they weren't a problem. No, this is deceptive and you guys are clearly more concerned with making sales than actually selling your customers good products. I have a problem with that. So the main thing is their only concern was with covering up the fact that their printer is a pile of junk and not actually wanting to fix the problems. They just want to sell you guys crap printers, period. That's how it comes off until their actions prove otherwise. That's my stance on this machine and that's my stance on two trees. Since we're also talking about ethical issues, their Sapphire and their Bluer are all running illegal copies of Marlin firmware. They're using a version of Marlin that's 1.0 that's wrapped up in some sort of 32-bit emulation type layer so they can run it on these STM chips. And when asked for the source code, they try to point fingers at MKS, give me some bogus email that just bounces and I don't have the source code. So in addition to all the shady dealings with the company and the poor quality of the actual machine itself, now we have legal issues where they're violating the GPL. Plain and simple, if you violate the GPL, you're blacklisted, period. If it wasn't enough for the machine being terrible and the company itself being terrible, now we have issues where they're stealing from the community by ways of not providing the source code when they legally are required to. I will go out of my way to make sure that everybody knows about all these issues with your machine, all the legal issues with your machine, and how you guys are doing very deceptive sales practices just to try to make sales and to sell consumers a printer that is god awful. So we're at the end of the video. Those are my grievances with the printer and the company. The TLDR is the machine itself, ignoring all the legal issues with the firmware and the shady deceptive practices of their salespeople. The machine is not worth the money. It's that simple. The Ender 3 is a better machine. The GTEC A10 is a better machine. Even the TiVo Tarantula Pro is a better machine, all at the same or lower price point. Why would you guys waste your time buying something inferior when you can get something that's much better that actually works from companies that actually care for the same price or less? Two Trees is a company that was actually rebranded because of the insane amount of flops that their previous company name had. You guys may not be aware of this, but Two Trees used to be called East 3D. East 3D Gecko is another company that was known for screwing over their customers to the point where they rebranded the entire company to Two Trees. I'm not sure if it's the same people doing sales and other stuff, but there's no way for me to verify or disprove that. I just felt it was worth mentioning because the practices I'm seeing here are along the same lines as the practices I've seen when I worked with East 3D over a year ago on their Core XY machine that was really terrible. So how can two trees redeem themselves? Well, you need to come out and apologize for violating the GPL license on this machine. You need to apologize for deceiving your customers and potential customers by telling them that there's no problems because you got me to remove videos, which are now back up on the channel. And anybody that has issues with this machine that you guys sold printers to, you need to send them out replacement parts to fix the problems with the printer. In addition to that, I know you guys have old stock out there once you do fix the machine, if you actually do fix the machine, and people are gonna buy those machines. Those people that buy those machines need to be sent out parts to fix the issues with the printer, or have the whole machine exchange if those issues can't be fixed by sending out additional parts. And then in terms of the firmware side, you guys need to provide the source code for the version of Marlin that you shipped with the printers. You can't just shove off people and say, well, we have a 2.0 version. That's not how this works. You distributed the older version with the printer and you distributed that to customers. Under that license, they are entitled to that source code that generated the firmware that you shipped them on that machine. Period. There's no other way around it. Well, that's it. This will be the last video about two trees I make unless they decide to turn their act around. Their Sapphire is a GPL violation and I've heard a lot of issues with that as well. As a whole, I recommend you stay away from two trees and their machines. There's a lot better options out there on the market that will provide you with a lot better quality machine, better customer service, and more importantly, companies that actually take care of their customers instead of just trying to milk money out of them by selling them garbage that doesn't work. Hope you guys appreciate the honesty in my videos here. I know sometimes I can be very crass. So in the future, I'm probably going to throttle back on how rough I'm being, especially on the live streams. But in the future, if for some reason I don't throttle back like I did on this one, I'll just put together a safe work version and upload that alongside on the channel. So you guys have something that's not filled with swear words and expletives 
because I'm that upset about how these companies or the printers are. So anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you don't waste money with two trees. And as always, happy printing.